Hello, welcome to the second part of SolStack video. In the first part, we had an introduction to SolStack. We looked at its installation process and we explored few of the salt components such as the salt pasture, the controlling system, the salt minion, the devices which are controlled by the salt master, grains, the pieces of information about the minion collected by the master, execution modules, commands executed by the user on the salt minion via master command line. In this video, we look at few more salt components such as pillar, state files, top file, salt proxy with focus on Juno's proxy. So let us start with pillars. Pillars are user defined variables which are distributed among minions. Pillars are very useful for specific sensitive data. This is so because not all minions can access all the pillars. As a user, we can specify what pillars are meant for what minions. Next we have state files. State files are at the heart of the configuration management component of salt. State file are also known as SLS file. The SLS file is a representation of the state in which a system should be once we run the state file on that particular system. So state file is an equivalent to the playbook in Ansible for those who are familiar with Ansible. By default the SLS files are in YAML format. So here is an example. So name of my state file is apache.sls. It is present at slash sre slash salt. This is the default file root. If you remember, we had defined file roots in the master configuration in the previous video. By default, file roots is slash sre slash salt. And that is where we keep our state files. So we have our apache.sls. Next is the ID. Every task is defined by an ID. So ID of this task is install apache. Next is the state declaration. Package is my state module, which is similar to execution module. Usually state modules are used in state files or SLS files. And state files are mirror of execution modules, which means if there is an execution module present, more often than not, the corresponding state module would be present. Maybe the names are different, but the state module would be present. So package is the name of my state module and installed is the function in the package module. So package.installed will install a given package on the salt minion. Next we are giving an argument name apache which is the name of the package we want to install. So if we run this apache.sls file on a particular minion, apache package would be installed on that minion. Also one more thing is that much like pillars we can specify what state files belong to what minions. So we can have certain group of minions having access to only particular state files. Next we have top file. So as we said earlier, we can define what pillar and state files a particular minion has. This mapping is usually present in the top file. Here is an example. The name of the top file is top.sls. It is present at slash srv slash salt. So to classify my state files, I'll have the top file in the same folder. Next, I have my category base in that the minion having ID min1 should have apache.sls file. As you can see in the name, I have removed the extension .sls. So this is how top file work. So we are going to explore pillar state file and top file in much more detail in the demo. So even if you don't understand the examples, it's okay. Next we have salt proxy. Salt proxy are a very important feature of salt which enables controlling devices that cannot run a standard salt minion. Examples can include network gear which runs proprietary OS, devices with limited CPU or memory, devices that could run a minion but for security reasons will not. We do not have a salt minion on our Junos boxes. For that purpose we have developed a Junos proxy which will provide the necessary plumbing that will allow device discovery, remote execution, state management of our Junos devices without having to install solid minion on the device. So let us have a look at how Junos proxy works. In a regular scenario, we have a master system and we have a salt master process running in it. We start a salt minion process which establishes a connection to the master and then the user can control this particular minion via the master. So we start a Junos proxy minion. We can start it 
on the minion system or the master system. The Juno's proxy minion process will establish a connection to the salt master as well as it will establish a connection to a Juno's device. This is done using PyEZ, a netconf connection is established. So now we have a Juno's proxy which is connected to the master on one side and on the other side it is connected to the Juno's device. So it basically acts as a bridge between the salt master and the actual Juno's device. So now a user can execute state modules or execution modules as they usually would on the salt master. The Juno's proxy minion will take care that actually these commands are executed on the device. So we can have more than one Juno's proxy minions running on the same system. So the Juno specific components which are present in salt as of now is the Juno's proxy which we just saw which helps to establish a connection with a Juno's device which do not have salt running on them. Next, we have exposed few of Juno's specific execution and state modules such as RPC to send RPC to a Juno's device. Then we have install config to install a configuration. Then we have facts which will show the facts of the Juno's device and many more. We will look at that in the demo. So when a Juno's proxy establishes a connection with the master and the device, the Juno's facts are by default stored in the grains. So we can access the facts as we access the grain in the previous video. Apart from that, we have a Juno syslog engine. Now salt has a capability to react to events which are sent on the event bus. So this Juno syslog engine will basically send Juno's events on this event bus and we can configure our salt minion to react to these events. We'll talk about Juno's engine in great detail in the next video. In this video, we will focus on Juno's proxy establishing a connection, running some execution modules and few of state modules. So let us move on to the demo. My screen is divided into three parts. The left side is the salt master, the top right is the salt minion and the bottom right is the Juno's device. So before starting the Juno's proxy, we need to add a certain configuration like we did for the minion. For proxy, the configuration file name is proxy and it is presented slash etc slash salt. In the proxy file, I give the IP address of my master. So now, my proxy minion needs to know the credentials of the Juno's device I want to connect to. These credentials are stored in pillars and pillars are present on the salt master. So all the SLS files, pillars, everything is present on the salt master. The salt master communicates it to the concerned minion. All right. By default, all the pillar files are present in slash SRV slash pillar. We can change the default using the pillar roots keyword in the master like we did for file roots. Here you can see I have a file called mx.sls. Let's have a look at it. So we need to give the proxy credential in a particular way. For example, the first keyword should be proxy. The next is the proxy type, which is Juno's. And then the host. Host is the IP address of my Juno's device. I also have another variable called name. This we will use in SLS files later. So just to establish a proxy connection, we don't need that name variable. We just need that proxy block. So we did two things. We created a proxy configuration file and we added the master. And on the master, we created a pillar which had the Juno's connection details. We need to assign this pillar file to my minion. We do that in top file. So here we have base, the group base, which is default. Next is the name of my proxy minion, which is VMX in this case. This is how I'll identify my minion. And MX.SLS is the pillar file which I am assigning to the Juno's proxy minion named VMX. You can see I have removed the extension .sls while mentioning it in the top file. So first we'll start the salt master. In this video, I'm running it in D1 mode using hyphen D. Next we'll start the Juno's proxy minion. For that we have salt hyphen proxy command, then hyphen hyphen proxy ID. Proxy ID is basically the name of my proxy minion. In this case, it is VMX. You remember we didn't specify the ID in my proxy configuration file because we can have more than one proxies running on the same minion and all of them use the same file. So we define the ID when we start the proxy. 
वन थिंग टू नोट इज ओनली वन जूनोस डिवाइस कैन बी कनेक्टेड विथ वन सॉल्ट प्रोक्सीम इंडियन प्रोसेस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कनेक्ट थ्री टू फोर जूनोस डिवाइसेज वी नीड टू रन थ्री टू फोर सॉल्ट प्रोक्सीम इंडियन प्रोसेसेज राइट सो बोथ माई सॉल्ट मास्टर एंड माई जूनोस प्रोक्सी इज रनिंग द जूनोस प्रोक्सीम वुड हैव एस्टैब्लिश अ कनेक्शन टू द मास्टर एज वेल एज टू माई जूनोस डिवाइस सो लेट इज रन सम एग्जीक्यूशन मॉड्यूल्स विच वी हैव डेवलप For that we have solved the name of the minion and let's do test dot ping. True, okay. Now let us run some Juno's execution modules. We have Juno's dot facts. This will show the facts of the device. These facts are also stored in the grains, which we can see again. So we do grains dot items. we have all the facts stored in the grains we will use this in sls files so that we can know, know its utility let us run some other juno specific execution modules so i can change the host name of my device to say test salt successfully changed we can check it here now we can call an rpc Let's do get chassis inventory. All right, the, we got the corresponding information. We can also specify the format in which we want. For example, I can say I want it in text format. You can see I have left empty quotes. This is because the second argument after the rpc name is usually specify the file in which i want to store the rpc output if i don't want to store it in a file i'll just give empty quotes so let us store this in a file we are storing it in temp salt files rpc dot text yeah let us check once on our menu we have rpc.txt yeah so we have the corresponding information so now let us jump on to the state files which are more widely used in my master i have defined my file routes if you remember from the previous video my file root is slash temp slash minion by default it is slash hrv slash salt but for this demo we have it in slash temp slash minion and this is where i'll keep all my state files or sls files let us have a look at some simple state files okay so first one is again rpc.sls so as you can see first argument is the name of the rpc which i want to execute in this case it is get interface information next is my state module which is junos after that i have my function rpc destination the file where i want the rpc output next i have an argument called interface name this is a filter so we just want information on interface lo0 all those arguments which pyz takes we can give it here in the sls file so now to run a state file we have a command called state dot apply and then the name of the sls file without the extension .sls so we don't need to mention the whole file roots name because by default the salt master will look at slash tem slash minion to locate rpc.sls file okay so we have got the interface information we can check it here we have rpc.log yes we have it here. let us have a look at another file which is install config so install config is another function provided by the juno state module as well as its execution module this function is basically used to install a particular configuration onto my device the first keyword is the location of my configuration file the file is config.set and it is present at my file root location next is the state module and then we have install config which is my function after that i have list of arguments which i want to pass to install config so i have comment so while committing 
I can give a comment like committed by salt proxy. Next, I have template variables. If you remember my pillar file. So let us have a look at config.set for better clarity. So in Juno's facts, there's a key value called personality, which gives the personality of the Juno's device. It can be MX, EX, SRX, whichever. And you know, the Juno's facts are stored in the grains. So we use that to check if my device is an MX. If the device is an MX, I set a MX specific host name or I set a generic host name. For MX specific host name, I'm specifying the MX name data variable into my SLS file itself as you saw. Or another method is putting it in pillar, which I'm doing in the else part. So I'm accessing the pillar data and I'm setting a generic host name. So now let us run the state file. State.apply. The name was install config. Since my device is an MX, it should be changed to MXRE0. Here, as you can see, my device name is changed to MXRE0. This is all for this video. In the next video, we'll have a look at the Juno syslog engine. Thank you.